How's it going, everyone? Good to see you. Well, as you know, my name is Peter Smart. I'm here from Fantasy Interactive. It is amazing to be here in Tokyo. And please join me in celebrating the work of Fantasy Interactive. Ooh, and the clicker doesn't work. Boom. OK. Great to see you, Tokyo. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, if you wanted to uh, follow along, tweet, heckle me, these are some of my social links. But we're going to jump straight into it now. We're going to start with a bit of an experiment. So here's what we're going to do. I want you to reach into your pocket like this. I want you to pull out your mobile phone like so and hold it up in the air above you. Take out your mobile phone and hold it up in the air like this. Everybody got that phone up? OK, here's what we're going to do. I want you to give your mobile phone to the person next to you. OK, hand it over. Hand your phone to the person next to you, to your left, your right, behind or in front of you. And when you have that person's phone, I want you to put their phone in your pocket like this. <laughs> ah! Who's feeling weird right now? Who's feeling disconcerted? Who was doing something they shouldn't have been doing and now their neighbor has their phone? Yes, that guy at the back. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you can hand them back now. Hand them back. It's OK. Uh, all right. Well, why is this so disconcerting? That is the premise of the talk that I am about to give. And we all know the reason for this. We are going to spend so much of our time in front of these screens that they have become part of who we are. In fact, you're going to have more skin-to-skin -skin contact with your devices than you will with your loved ones in your entire life. That is unbelievable. And just to quantify, just for a second, how much time we're going to spend in front of our devices, 41% of our in life will be spent in front of a screen. That is 8,000 days. That is 21 years of your life that you will spend in front of a screen. 21 years. 21 years ago was when Will Smith was popular, 21 years ago. So therefore, what we are doing as designers is just so important because we're going to be designing the things that are going to be used by millions of people around the world in these 21 years of their life. Now, what we get to do is design experiences for people. And I really want to hone in on that word experiences because we get to use it every day. We're experienced designers, but what does it really mean to design experiences? In real life, we absolutely know what experiences are. They are the things that fill us with life. They are the first time that we see our child. They are a walk in nature. They are being face to face with another human being. These are all experiences. They're the things that move us, that feed our soul. And so we get to be user experience designers, and that is an amazing thing. But the problem that we have is that so much of what we are doing as user experience designers isn't really about experience at all. And in fact, it's actually about being user transaction designers. If you take a step back, just a small one, just for a moment, and actually look at so much of what is being produced there out in the world today, this is what we see. 
And so much of it feels like a soulless exchange. It's like this data in, data out, move fast and break things, approach to design. And there's no problem with these, these terms, sprint, MVP. Who's heard of these terms before? Yeah, everybody in the room, of course you have. They are phenomenal, they are fantastic, but they are taught so, so poorly. And we end up in a world of just moving so fast and we end up with things like wireframing kits. Wireframing kits, wireframe as fast as you've ever been able to design before. And that's why we're gonna be replaced as designers by AI, because AI is really, really good at putting together different components and making and breaking and testing new things. It can do it so much faster than we can. Therefore, we should get back to well, what it is that we're actually doing as designers, because we are truly user experience designers. That's the privilege that we get to have every single day in the role that we play. We have the opportunity to create magic. And that's what we try and do at Fantasy. Uh, we've been around now for 20 years. It's our 20th year this year, still an independently owned uh, design company. Uh, and what we call this is just user experience design, but because user experience design or UX design has become so commoditized and so reduced to really just user testing, we really had to make it grand again. Because really what we're doing is designing for human beings and not just the rational part of their brain, but for full human beings. That is ultimately who we're designing for. We're designing for you, the person next to you. That's what all of us are doing on a day-to-day -day basis. And what I want to talk about here isn't just the, the art of designing for human beings, but also the reason why. When you do this, I want to show you from as many examples as I've got here in our portfolio as to why when you design for full human beings, when you feed their soul, what you're going to create for them will be highly successful as a result. So just to quickly introduce myself, and then we'll get back to it. My name is Peter Smart. That is actually my real name. <laughs> it was, uh, it's, it's quite a cool name now, I think. When I was a kid, it wasn't so cool. Um, kids are very, very mean. Uh, I don't know if any of you have kids or were kids. I think some of you were kids. But um, when kids are growing up, the name Smart isn't a cool name. It became Smarty Pants. Smart ass. My personal favorite was Smarty Farty, uh, which my team still loving me calling me today. Um, but uh, when I'm not doing this, I'm not traveling the world, getting to speak in front of fantastic audiences like yourselves. Uh, I'm going on big adventures and taking big risks because, hey, that's what life is all about. Uh, a few months ago, I marooned myself on a deserted island. Uh, the population of the island was zero apart from me. I took nothing with me. This is actually a true story. Uh, and if you want to talk about it later. We can, we'll do it at the bar. Okay, let's get back to it. So typically this talk is longer. There's many more case studies, but for today I'm going to take us through one case study, if that sounds good. And then we're going to cover off some learnings from across the entire body of work talking about creating magic for people. So this particular case study here is for a company called Royal Caribbean. Royal Caribbean are a cruise company. By show of hands, who knows what a cruise is or has been on a cruise? Okay, great. For everyone who does and then let me give you a little sense of what Raw Caribbean is all about. <laughs> Okay, so that is Royal Caribbean. So Royal Caribbean are the world's largest cruise company. They have uh, 55 ships globally. And for anyone who's never been on a cruise before, um, I'm about to tell you about this incredible circus that is a cruise. So with them, we shipped uh, actually more than this now, but 14 different products with them from conception to actually being in market in 24 months, which is an incredible partnership with them. We made everything from uh, frictionless arrival experiences to amazing check-in experiences, crew experiences, his interactive games actually aboard the ship. We made, um, what, is there Uber here in Tokyo? I think there's Uber in Tokyo, yeah? 
Yeah, yes, there is. We made Uber for mojitos. So imagine being able to press a button. Now everyone's interested. Uh, now, imagine being able to press a button and someone's just going to walk in that door and just bring you a glass of wine right now. That would be amazing, right? We made that for them, and it truly is amazing. I actually want it for my real life wherever I go. Um, but we've done incredible things with them. I want to tell you about just one of them to begin with, which is the application. Uh, so the app itself is in service of something much bigger. So a cruise itself is made up of hundreds and hundreds of activities and restaurants and shops and shore excursions and bars and shows. And there is just so much going on. It's like a floating mall, hotel, casino, all combined into one. And crucially, you're surrounded by thousands of other people who are all trying to make the most of their crews alongside you. And so therefore, the purpose of this app was to really maximize your cruise cruising experience. It should really make sure that you get the most out of this vacation that you've paid a lot of money to be at with your particular family. So this is what we made. This is not what we made. Uh, this is the original app. Can you imagine that? And this is what we made. No, <laughs> I'm, I really, I make this joke every time. I'm really sorry to the original designer who actually designed this. Um, Anyway, I uh, know this is not what we made. This is the original application. Uh, we worked with them for six months in the port in Miami from our offices in New York and in San Francisco. And then we shipped this. This is the new Royal Caribbean application. You can download it on the App Store right now if you want to. And it allows you to explore your cruise like you've never been able to before. Everything is built in 3D. We're using a Unity 3D end, and it's live and it's real time. You're seeing the live position of the ship wherever it is in the world. You're seeing the live weather, the live live time of day, because all these things fundamentally come back to the main point of what you're trying to do on this cruise, which is make decisions. Decide what you want to do, and therefore giving people this information and this context around where they are, what's going on, and what's around them is crucial to the experience itself. We completely remapped all of the content strategy. We made things like VR shore excursions, allowing you to experience things like the snorkeling or scuba diving tour in VR from your room before even going on it, and all kinds of incredible stuff. But I'm not here to talk to you about just the flashy stuff at the end, because hey, that stuff's all pretty and sexy and whatever, but I want to show you guys how on earth we got there. I want to take you and actually just rip open the process and show you, as we would say in America, the sausage in the making. I don't know if that phrase translates here into Japanese, but it's a very disgusting phrase in America, so hopefully it's okay here. Uh, the sausage in the making. I want to show you how on earth we got there and all the messy details. So whenever we start, we always start with experiential principles. What those are are North Stars, things that, as David mentioned this morning, things that we're going to try and hold true to in this particular project. I want to take you through them. So number one, context is everything. That's exactly what I'm describing. If you're on board this ship with thousands of other people understanding what's going on, where you are, what's around you, what can I do right now? I have three screaming kids in half an hour that I need to kill. What on earth do I do? Understanding what is going on is everything. The second is a really funny story. So this is the first meeting I ever had with the client um, in Miami. In the first meeting with them, they tell me, Peter, if you ever show us a hamburger menu, you are fired. Which you're laughing now. At the time, I took a step back and I was like, whoa. But then I was like, whoa, yes. These guys totally get it because that's exactly the point. You're on vacation. You're not using Excel. You're not using your Google like Docs. You're here for a vacation. Therefore, it shouldn't be about scrolling through lists and filters and sorts and all kinds of archaic and boring spreadsheet-like experiences. It should actually be about allowing you to discover everything that is on offer in a really, really seamless way. And the last principle was this, which is to support decision moments. If you truly have and for the parents in the room, of which I, I'm a new one, if you have screaming kids right now, you have enough going on externally, if you have to try and hop onto an app to actually tell you what's going on, you need that to be fast. You need to, to support that decision moment, and that includes prior to the cruise, before you're actually on your vacation, in the moment, and then actually allowing you to make those phenomenal choices. 
Our ultimate objective, though, internally here at Fantasy is not because we're in any way esoteric, but we do hold ourselves to a really high standard. We've never had a, a sales team or a new business team in 20 years. It's because of the impact of the work that we produce going out into the world is our new business team. And so for us, this was our internal objective, to create the world's most impactful experience in this particular industry. Let's dive into design. Who knows what these are? Yeah? Everyone recognize them? These are user stories. Who has anxiety when they see these right now? Yeah, many of you. I know exactly what you mean. And the temptation when you see these and you are hearing things like the engineering team are actually two weeks ahead of you already, so you guys have to catch up right now. That is fear. If I could describe fear and gut-wrenching emotions to you, looking at this and understanding the timeline and the fact that we just have to get going is just that horrible sinking feeling. But we never let ourselves get that to that point where we're just rushing into design, rushing into sketch. Instead, we start with those principles and then we, tr we try and build out this vision. What is it we're actually going to try and create? And so what we're doing here is, is creating the framework of the entire experience. This is like the, if you were to imagine making um, a paper prototype of the app, understanding how all these different surfaces are going to come together, how the information architecture and the content and the navigation are all going to come into one seamless experience, this is what we call framework. And so making this early, paper prototyping it, and then actually prototyping it, like you'll see here, these were just rapid prototypes that I was creating often on planes backwards and forwards from Miami using things like principle, trying to feel out this experience and how the content and the information architecture was actually going to come together. Then we start doing scrappy experiments. And I'm really embarrassed to show you these because you're going to see the very end sexy result is what I should be showing you. But this is actually how we start, coming up with scrappy experiments. I mean, look at the ship. I illustrated that in Sketch. It just looks like some kind of hot dog. And I have no idea what it looks <laughs> It's so bad. But the point is, it's communicating a vision. Rather than just jumping into sprint zero, sprint one, getting onto those features and just getting going and trying to figure it out as we go, starting with a vision, starting with something that actually communicates how this whole experience is going to come together so that you can show other people. And even if it is low fidelity, if you can describe it like this and describe those features and describe the value of those features, you can even see here in actually some of the, of the files, look, there's the live time of day, there's the live weather, there's things like the, the feed here for the different uh, things that you can do. All of those concepts actually made it into the application itself, but it started here and it took five seconds to put down on paper. But communicating that vision is what united the engineering team, the product team, the content team, the design team, the executive team behind that vision so we all know what we were making. And so as designers, it's often really the temptation to never show this kind of work ever. This is the kind of work that dies in the sketch file that we want to throw into the sea and have n no one ever see. But but if you can communicate ideas, no matter how scrappily, and get people excited about them, they are really, really powerful. So this is how we started. The next thing we did is create motion prototypes. For us, motion isn't something that you just do at the very end. Motion isn't just the icing on the cake. It's not the fairy dust that you do to kind of make the hamburger menu kind of transition into the, the, the forward arrow. Like that, that's nice, but it's fluffy. It's nothing really powerful. Motion is something which drives the entire experience. Motion is where we are in 2020. We have supercomputers in our pocket. And if you're thinking about screen, navigate to screen, navigate to screen, we're missing the power of the experiences that we're able to make because we're able to take people on these seamless journeys. And motion is such an amazing tool to be able to do that. And so we do these motion prototypes really early to show how these different interactions and motion experiences, like navigating the ship and scrolling through the feed can actually bring something to life. We are then testing with cruisers. Who's done user testing before? Yeah, everybody in the room, I'm sure. You have never met a more motivated group of user testers than cruisers. Because when you offer them free drinks at the bar in exchange for testing your app, you have a line that goes out the door, my friends. It's amazing. And so we were regularly testing this app with cruisers as they were coming on and off the ship in the port in Miami to get their feedback. And we're then creating from that the design system. 
This is where things start to come to life. But crucially, this is across the entire digital ecosystem. Remember that first slide I mentioned, 14, 15, 16 different products? That is real. We're making a design system here which has to scale across all of those different canvases and surfaces and actually different brands, as I'll show you in a moment. So this thing is evolving and adapting and breaking. It's not precious. It's not the Bible. It's there as a tool for us to keep pushing on it until it breaks, and then we make it better. We're then evolving and adapting. Our team is based um, in San Francisco, New York, London, and Miami, but we also work with amazing designers all around the world, often in different time zones. We have an incredible set of designers actually here in Tokyo who we've worked with for many years. And so often I'm doing uh, video walkthroughs and calls with them in the evenings as you're waking up here in your morning, and we're evolving and we're adapting and we're iterating together in this very hands-on way. And you can start to see the experience coming to life. And this is the, the live final result. As I mentioned, it's everything about context, showing you where you are, what's going on, including the live sun position. So this is really important. If you're on the 24th floor of the ship, really low down on the decks, you want to understand what time of day it is, whether or not it's raining outside, whether or not I want to go to the outdoor pool or go to one of the indoor shows right now. Uh, and then working with that content, bringing to life the content, completely remapping the content, working hand in hand with their content strategy team to make the content immersive and inviting and just things that you want to do. And then creating fluidity. So this is a really interesting point, again, about motion and working with engineering teams and what it means to create designed experiences that feel like magic as opposed to feeling like they are designed screens. I'm going to show you one thing really quickly. So if you look at that bottom screen here, you're going to see me navigate from one screen to the next screen. Did you see that down there? So when we were first um, proposing the feed and the different days of how you would actually move between different things, we were speaking with the engineering team and they said, OK, guys, there's actually going to be a, maybe a one or two second delay based on the latency uh, of the signal on the ship. We're in the middle of the ocean. Remember, there's, there's, the Wi-Fi out here isn't super strong. Um, but there's going to be a one to two second delay between those two screens. I hope that's OK. And we said, one to two second delay of just a white screen? Are you crazy? That sounds terrible. No, it's not OK, but we can figure it out and we can fix it. And so what did we do? Well, we said, well, what additional things can we add to this experience? Not again for fluffy kind of animation sake, but that actually give people contextual information that actually allow them to make smarter decisions about what they want to do on that next day. And so we made a call here to the Weather API. You'll see it come up here. Uh, and that in and of itself masked the entire two-second delay that exists, but actually added value to the human being who's actually going to be using it. And so this is the synergy between designers and engineering teams coming together to make things that actually meet the needs of people and actually feel magical. They don't just feel like technology for technology's sake. This is, um, again, 55 ships globally, over three different sub-brands. You have Royal Caribbean, Azamara Cruises, Celebrity Cruises. This is a white-labeled experience across 55 ships. And so even the color of the water is unique to that particular brand based on the sort of audience that we're trying to appeal to. We built out 55 ships in 3D, every single deck, every single floor, even the color of the wood is accurate to the color of that ship. I can see many faces at this point glazing over, saying, why on earth would you make the wood color identical to the color on the ship? I don't know. Like There was no user story. I do know. that There was no user story that said, yeah, make sure the wood is perfect. There was no user story that said, animate little kids zipping down the slides. There wasn't at all. But we know what it's like when you've spent thousands of dollars on something to experience it as opposed to use it, to enjoy it as opposed to just have data in, data out, and just benefit from it. It is those magical details that really, truly maximize your experience and show this is something that we really care about. We care about you having the best possible, most accurate and spectacular experience. And if that means designing a 3D octopus slide, then by darn it, we will design it, and that's what we did. This uh, was one of the other products that we made as well. This was the stateroom TV. Imagine waking up to this first thing in the morning when you're in your hotel room aboard the ship. This is that perfect synergy 
of um, UX uh, and uh, design and business all coming together into one spot. Because as a human being aboard the ship, you want to understand what there is to do. As someone who's in the business team, we want you to understand all there is to do and actually engage in it. And so showing you in really nice ways all the amazing opportunities that exist at every destination that you're going to, again, was this perfect synergy of business need and user need, and therefore has been really successful as a result. So what I want to do now is take you through a few quick learnings uh, just from this project. So learning number one. We learned how much commitment it takes to follow through on a design vision. And it really, really does take a lot of commitment. At any one point in this process, the engineering team, the business team, the leadership team, the content team could have said, guys, we are like two weeks already behind and we're just getting started. We just need to go. Let's save the visionary stuff for like version three of the app, but let's just get something out the door now. How many times have you heard that in your careers, I wonder? Therefore, I think you can empathize with how much commitment it takes to hold true to something, to say, yes, we will create something for human beings that isn't just about producing something fast, moving fast and breaking things, but actually is an experience. To give you an example, this is an MVP. This is what we actually created. And to emphasize the point, it would be really, really difficult to launch something like this on the left-hand side and then sprint and sprint and sprint and sprint and end up with something like on the right-hand side. Does that make sense? Like once you've made your bed, you're going to lie in it. So actually having that commitment to create something at the very beginning that actually sets you up to uh, enable your vision to take uh, hold is a really, really important thing. But learning number two, it pays off. It pays off to do that. These are just some of the amazing things that we've seen as a result of these uh, products going out into that ecosystem, and it's phenomenal. Um, and learning number three, which I think is a really, really valid learning, which is I often uh, hear things like, Pete, this is fantastic. It's for an amazing cruise company, uh, incredible content, uh, VR shore excursions, amazing destinations. Yep, 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 but I work for a bank. Or I work for like you know a, a financial commercial mortgages company. Commercial mortgages, super boring. This is what we made for a commercial mortgage company. Uh, here's the thing: it's the same human beings who are aboard these ships on the weekends that are then coming into work on a Monday morning. Nothing changes in that context. Nothing changes. The same human beings. They're just trying to get jobs done. And therefore, making that experience of allowing them to get their jobs done so seamless and so simple is what we get to do as designers. People don't change into personas on Monday morning. Like That's just not what, how it works. But that's something that we often fall ourselves, we trap ourselves into thinking and just to show you this, this uh, was a really, really interesting project. Um, commercial mortgages, I'm going to just streamline it down. It takes hundreds of people to build a skyscraper to even put together the permits to put together a skyscraper here in uh, Tokyo or in New York or anywhere in the world. And the reason why it takes so long often for any building to ever be brought out of the ground is all the paperwork before they've even broken ground in that particular plot. And so what this tool does is it took all of the hundreds and hundreds of people, hundreds and hundreds of tasks that it takes to actually get things moving, which by the way, up until recently was just done on paper with FedEx and real actual red pen and digitized all of it. And the real human insight was making it just five simple things that you as the one individual in that chain have to do today. And that particular tool and that particular twist in the psychology from I have a list of 100 things spanning over the next two years to try and do to just five simple things to do today has revolutionized the industry and it's seen amazing results already in New York City. So I hope you enjoyed uh, this first uh, case study here. Uh, and what I'm going to try and do now, he says, looking over to his left to see how much time he's got, uh, which is actually less than two minutes. I'm going to try and show you learnings from across all of our different projects uh, to really sum things up here. So here we go. From across our entire body of work, what it means to make things for human beings that drive successful interactions with real human beings. Number one. 
MVP, forget this term MVP. Think MLP, minimum lovable product. It is so, so difficult to sprint from the left-hand side to the right-hand side. Therefore, what you create to begin with has to be that foundation. Think about it as the cross-section of the entire human being, not just the functional part of them. The second thing, Convention is just permission to try better. And that is just so, so true. And I'm seeing so many nods in the room right now. It's because we're designers. If this wasn't true, we would be out of the job tomorrow. It is our job to create the new thing, not just to rely on, to, on conventions, rely on everything that's been done before us, but to actually find smarter, better, more efficient, more successful, more beautiful ways of doing things. And that is the beauty of what we get to do every single day. What a privilege that is. Number three, draw from the real world. There has been this thing called user interaction design for hundreds of thousands of years before the iPhone. Did you know that? It's called the real world. We've been interacting with things and manipulating them and holding them and using them for hundreds of, of hundreds of thousands of years before the iPhone. Therefore, there is so much inspiration that we can draw from these tactile experiences. This is an operate. Has anyone seen the movie called Her with Joaquin Phoenix? Does everyone know that movie? Yeah, awesome movie, one of my favorites. We're making an artificially intelligent driven operating system right now for one of our partners. This is some of the early experiments working with them. Uh, the OS was codenamed Natural. Uh, and so we're using really natural interactions. Like, who's ever tried to unlock their phone and it says, like, Z -Z -Z, I don't recognize your face? Who that's happened to me? many of you, right? How inhuman is that? And so we're trying to reinvent paradigms that make you feel like a human being when you're interacting with your phone, including drawing from the real world itself. Number four, think in flows, not screens, as I mentioned before. The incredible power of what we have in our pocket allows us to transport people on a journey. Think in flows. Don't just think in sketch artboards and don't think about the intermediate part between them. The intermediate is where the magic happens. And finally, less but better. This is directly stolen from Dear to Rams, but I steal it with the greatest grace in my heart because I so believe it, less but better. If you can strip something down to its most simple entities and elements, you can make the users that you're designing for feel like superheroes. This is a um, engagement ring customizer application. I don't know if there's anyone in the room who's bought an engagement ring before, who's, had, uh, who's been tried to have, uh, have one sold to them by a salesman. It is a really stressful experience, but we wanted to create something here that actually allowed you to feel like you could create and customize something from scratch by yourself and do that in just four or five taps. That's what it means to create less but better. Okay, and finally, number six. Do we have time just for one more case study? What do you think, guys? Yeah, should we do it? All right, let's do it. Here we go. Let's do one more. So, this uh, is a uh, kids' TV application. Uh, and for this, we're going to start actually with a typeface this time around. So, let's take a look at that. Here we go. This is the typeface. Okay, so it's kind of interesting, rounded, quirky. I like where it's going. But let's use that typeface now to actually create a logo. So this is for uh, Voot Kids. Let's add some more color now. It's starting to become more interesting, but what would it really take to actually bring this to life? Okay, now we're talking. Now we just heard about character design. I like these little characters. Let's start to actually bring the entire system now to life with all that we're doing from the app iconography to the system iconography, actually into the product itself. This is Voot Kids, and everything about this is designed to fill you with life. As a parent, as a kid, it's not about interacting with something like Netflix. It's about bringing to you something which is so unique but so intuitive at the same time. The interactions here which bring a brand to life. And when you actually access the content itself, there are no words, there are no things jumping out at you. It's just the content allowing you to experience it in the way that you want to, discovering all that's on offer. And that leads me to my final point which is this, if it fills you with life when you are designing it, it will fill those with life that you are designing it for. Thank you guys so much for your time. I've really appreciated it.